Hello YouTube, and welcome back to Turmoil in the Toy Box. I'm your host, Aaron Hauser, and we will be reviewing today the McFarlane Movie Maniacs Thing Collection. This is from uh, John Carpenter's version, the 80s version, which personally I think is the best. They had uh, two different figure packs that they released. One came with the Norris creature and the uh, spider head. And they also released the Blair Monster from the very end of the film. So if you haven't seen the movie, sorry for spoiling it, that's what's up. And it's pretty fucking awesome. So we'll start out with the, uh, the Blair Monster here, because uh, there's a little less to go over with him. As with most of the uh, McFarlane Movie Maniacs figures, the definition and the detail in these is fucking phenomenal. Uh, this thing just looks as disgusting and sad and deformed as it did in the film. And it's so cool to see all the the detail on this going from uh, Blair's face, which is kind of stretching out of this, this jaw that's opening up on the top, uh, the arms and claws that kind of reach out, the dog that was half formed, that kind of burst from the chest when the uh, the creature kind of came out of the ground in the end there. It's got the tentacles that are all kind of writhing around. Um, now when I got mine, uh, let's see if I can find the point that was broken. Um, this portion down here, if you can see, uh, actually detaches. <clears throat> mine was chipped when uh, it arrived from shipping the box must have got drop kicked or something, I don't know. But a little super glue uh, placed in there with some pressure, it, it holds in fine. But it is needed because it does uh, give some good balance to the side, seeing as how uh, most of the weight kind of shifts over to the front right side of the figure. Uh, each of these tentacles, though, are very fragile. Uh, they feel like they could break off very easily. Um, they don't rotate at all. They're made to just kind of stick out in one position and stay there. And let me see. In the back here, yeah, they don't really detach to any extent. So other than the one that I said kind of popped off during shipping. As far as articulation goes, um, the only parts that really move are the head which rotates, uh, I want to say 360, but I'm sure as hell not going to try because I think it would chip it. Uh, the shoulder is supposed to rotate, but that's kind of stuck in position. The wrists on the claws rotate. The dog's arms actually kind of rotate a little on there, but like I said, some of these are very stiff. So if once you get out of the package, you want to see if you know, you can rotate it at all. If not, just leave it be. Um, rotation on this joint. This one definitely moves. And then the claw at the wrist. Same with the back arm. But a very cool figure. Um, it's, a, it's a great reminder that, you know, films used to have some incredible animatronic creatures that, you know, really did, really did the film justice and... I don't know, I just feel like animatronics in the 80s definitely were able to make things scarier. They, they make, made things feel a bit more visceral and a bit more real. You know, when you have something CGI jumping out at you, it just still looks like a fucking cartoon. Which was my complaint with the, the prequel that they made recently to this. But, yeah, you can, never, you can never beat the old practical effects for film, so. But yeah, that is the Blair Creature shove him aside here and we will go on to the Norris creature which this is my favorite scene in the entire movie it's it's so out of the blue and scary and the the, the timing of it is just perfect the detail on this figure is phenomenal you've got uh, a little bit of like fuzzy hair that's kind of implanted in the top He's got kind of that, that growl look on his face. The neck, it looks like it could bend. Whoa. Um, 
but it rotates in one point and then at the head slightly. But as with the uh, the Blair creature, it's it's very stiff in the joints. So once you get it, just be careful how you uh, articulate it. My main beef with this is the balance. It all the weight goes down onto this little foot almost, which isn't even completely flat. I do like it looks sort of like. A torso, you've got the uh, the arm nubs and the, the neck nub there and the guts are kind of open and all sprawling out building up to the the alien as it's trying to form a Norris replica and as far as articulation goes I believe these side arms rotate I'm not gonna try that again each of these claws that stick out are so incredibly fucking fragile. It's not even funny. Um, you can kind of rotate them around a little bit. And let's see. You can kind of rotate it back a little. I can't even do it one handed. This thing is so flimsy and disproportioned. The claws are very cool looking, though. They have really good detail on them. They don't go straight up, and they don't have any sort of joints in the uh, midsection, which would have been really nice, because then you can make it kind of in that position where it's latched onto the ceiling, as it's kind of screaming and writhing out of his body. But for what it is, it's very cool. Um, I think it would have been really cool if they actually made like a, a body with the legs on the operating table. Just as kind of like a, a deluxe model, that would have been kind of cool. I'm sure you could do that very easily, though. Put the body on a, you know, a little plastic gurney or something like that, and make it look a little better. But yeah, very cool figure, very good paint application. Just a lot of a, uh, lot of flimsiness, which is a shame because, you know, as much as I love this figure, I know it just takes one dive off the shelf and it's it's shattered and pretty much all the joint places so and then the last up is his little buddy that actually comes with the Norris creature figure is the spider head which is one of the most iconic creatures from John Carpenter's film let alone we'll just go with John Carpenter movies in general. This is such a very cool, very iconic piece. And they did a very good job capturing the creepiness of it. Uh, as far as articulation goes on this, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say there is none. The There's supposed to be rotation in the little uh, ball joints that the legs are on, but it literally feels as if you tried to move them at all, they would snap out of place. Which really sucks. Um, the legs are already kind of positioned in this sort of walking stance, so that it does balance it on one, two, three legs that actually touch the ground. But it is it is slightly wobbly, so you got to be very careful with it. The eye stalks do not move which also kind of pissed me off, but they're positioned in kind of a weird sort of a sort of stance there. And then the head kind of looks like it's still screaming, which is cool. If you actually tip it upside down, this is what's kind of cool. It actually kind of does look like Norris's head. It's got the hair that's kind of growing out of the back there. And you got the the legs coming out of the ears and the eyes and it's all contorted and everything which is cool but yeah very cool piece it's incredibly fragile it literally feels like these legs are made out of pretzel sticks you know as with the the big Norse creature just one fall and this thing is toast so each of these figures are fairly pricey um, 
I got really lucky and found the Norse creature on Amazon for 12 bucks from somebody in Nevada, actually, which was kind of cool. And I ended up getting the Blair creature for about 20 bucks on sale on Amazon as well. Um, since the film came out and people are in high demand trying to find the original or, you know, memorabilia from the original film, I've seen both of these go for about 40 to 50 bucks. Oftentimes you can find them a lot cheaper if you look in the right places. Um, for the Norris creature, I probably would not pay over 30 bucks for it. It's a very, very cool piece, and if you are a, a monster fanatic or just a big John Carpenter fan, it's definitely worth the price. As is the Blair creature. But when you are having these shipped to you, you know, it's it would not hurt to ask them to double wrap or add some bubble wrap or something to cushion the, the blister card packaging um, during shipment because they they are very fragile and very likely will have something broken on them when they arrive. If if they come in one piece, that's awesome, but just in all reality they're they're very fragile, so but that's about it. Long live John Carpenter and thanks for watching.